Hi, welcome to Mel's Health. I'm Mel, it's lovely to have you here. Today I'm doing a bit of a shorter video just around the blood test that most people out there who have had a blood clot diagnosis will have had, the D-dimer. I had an experience with this at my three month review with the thrombosis clinic that I was referred to when I first left hospital. I was initially diagnosed with submassive pulmonary embolism in May of 2020. So in the August, I attended the thrombosis clinic to meet with my doctor and report on how the first three months had gone, how I was feeling, and we would talk about my treatment plan for the next three months. If you've seen any of my videos so far, you'll know that I still don't feel great. I'm pretty much at the eight month point now, um, and I'm still getting pain, I'm still tired, I'm absolutely knackered this morning, but this is part of everyday life at the moment. But when I attended the appointment back then, I obviously explained all the stuff I was feeling back then to her, the fact that I was still getting pain and fatigue and hadn't really noticed a lot of improvement. My doctor said she wanted me to go get the D-dimer test whilst I was there that day because I shouldn't still be getting a whole lot of pain at the three month point, according to her. She did say that, you know, some people do have a bit of a rough time with the healing process, um, but most people's clots do clear up within the first month or so. There is some discomfort as the blood starts to return to areas of the lungs that have been deprived of it for some time, but she ordered the D-dimer test and off I went. So what is the D-dimer blood test? When you've had a clot of any kind and it's broken down, there's still remnants of this floating around in your blood. I'm talking about any average Joe out there who has ever cut themselves and healed before. So everybody at some point in their life. When you've had a cut, your body goes through some steps to make the blood clot up. It's a regular part of healing in all of us. Once the bleeding stops and the clot isn't needed anymore, then the body goes through some more steps in order to break that clot down. One of the leftover pieces of a protein from this process is D-dimer, and this will just go away. But if you have a large amount of clot somewhere, like a DVT or a PE, then you're going to have high levels of D-dimer in your blood, hence the test for the levels. In the August, at my three month review, my D-dimer test came back as negative, meaning that I didn't have an elevated level of D-dimer in my blood. So going on from that, my doctor didn't really have any major concerns. She was assuming that all my clots had broken down due to the negative D-dimer. She did reiterate at this point, again, that some people do just have a bit of a tough time with the healing process and said again that, you know, blood clots can leave scar tissue in some sensitive areas and I might just uh, continue to feel this. Some people watching might wonder why I wasn't scanned again at the three month point. And that is because the care plan here where I am is not to scan patients more than once every six months due to the radiation exposure. If my blood test had returned positive with elevated levels of D-dimer in my blood, then I might have been sent for a, another scan earlier because they do do that in more emergent situations or if there is an ongoing concern. So I think had the positive result come back, I might have been treated a bit differently, um, but that's just not how it played out at this point. So the way it did leave is that I just left with um, a continued prescription for the blood thinner that I was currently on, which was a Pixaban, AKA Eloquis. And I'd been on that since the start back in May. Despite having the negative D-dimer, um, the doctor had already kind of decided that due to me having such a large amount of clot and then being quite large back in May, that a minimum of six months on blood thinners was my treatment plan, despite how the result came back. So we go away from the three month review, assuming that the clots are broken down and that I am healing, albeit slowly, and I'm just gonna gradually start to feel better. The fact that I had the negative D-dimer means that I shouldn't have clots anymore. This doesn't happen though. And if you've uh, seen any of my other videos, then you'll know that I've mentioned that I returned at the six month point where they scan you by default at this point, just to see if all is well in the lungs and how far that you've come. I had a VQ scan, which I will explain what that is in a future video, but it showed that I still had all the same clots that I had in the May um, in all the same places. They look to have marginally shrunk, um, but I was basically in the exact same boat I was in six months prior. I'm now, as I said, almost at the eight month point and I feel exactly the same. So when I thought about doing a video on what the D-dimer blood test is, I thought I'll look up and see if I can find any instances 
where people have a negative D-dimer blood test, but they are still suffering from blood clots. And it proved to be quite difficult and a bit of a rarity. I found a study online though, where a lady had tested negative on the D-dimer, but she did have a large PE, and I'll put the link to the study down below. But it states in the study, due to the high sensitivity of the D-dimer test, it is used to demonstrate the specific diagnosis of pulmonary embolism or deep vein thrombosis. In contrast, a negative D-dimer testing rules out severe pulmonary embolism in high probability. In the case study, they reported on a 46-year-old lady who was suffering acute severe pulmonary embolism and they identified that through the CT imaging. But when they did her D-dimer, she had negative levels. And they report that this case was important and needed to be studied because of the lack of elevated D-dimer um, in the test, even when she was experiencing severe pulmonary embolism. So reading that, it kind of makes you wonder, you know, am I an anomaly? You know, why did I get a negative D-dimer only three months in when I clearly still had all the clots that I was still suffering with at the initial diagnosis? It's food for thought. I don't know if it's because a D-dimer looks for things that might be more fresh. So when I was diagnosed in May, um, I would have had about elevated levels, but then three months on because they were the same clots, um, they weren't producing the same amount of levels. Um, I haven't actually asked the answers to these questions, but it's something that's on my mind now. So it'll be something that I'll probably ask at my next review with the doctor. But if anyone else has ever had this experience by getting a negative D-dimer reading, but actually being diagnosed with blood clots, um, then I'd love to know because it sounds like we're a bit of an anomaly in the medical field and doctors rely heavily on what the D-dimer test says. Um, it does make me wonder that if you know, it had come back differently at the three month review, would I have been scanned? They would have seen that the clots weren't breaking down. Would I have been treated differently? Um, because at the six month review, I was switched onto different meds and my journey kind of changed a little bit. So it just makes you wonder whether I might have been treated differently had this test not just been the be all and end all to the diagnosis. So this is a question I'm probably gonna ask my doctor when I go in for my next review, and then I'll probably make a subsequent video on any more, more information that I get on the topic. But for today, I'm just gonna round the video up there. And it's just a brief snapshot into what the D-dimer test is and the experience that I had with it. If you found this video helpful or interesting, then please give it a like and subscribe to my channel for more content. And if you haven't seen any of my other videos, then please do check them out after this. And as always, I thank you very, very much for watching and I'll see you again soon. Bye.